Hello, welcome to the Homeless Youth Project. I'm Ron Austin, and uh, my guest here is Kathleen Dreyer. Hi, Kathleen. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah. Um, as you, if you watched our last show, I told you what the Homeless Youth Project was. It's a uh, the Homeless Youth Project is a project of Pan Left Productions in partnership with Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation. Uh, Pan Left Productions being a video cooperative and uh, the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation being a group of people who, are, who, do, who practice video and photo advocacy for the homeless and those in poverty here in Tucson. Well, today, what is up? We've got Kathleen Dreyer here, and she is a volunteer photographer for the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation. And what we are going to do, we are going to discuss our feelings and our, um, what, what we, how we feel about having come in contact with homeless youth because uh, she and I have done video and photos, interviews with many homeless youth in Tucson. And I want you to get a feel for, uh, for, for the reality of the condition through our thoughts and our feelings and our uh, the stuff that we're, we think about when we do this sort of thing. And if you want to, you can go to the FigueroaFoundation.com, which is on your screen right now, and you, which is our website, which, and therefore you can see some of the videos and uh, the photos of the youths that we have uh, interviewed. So. Kathleen, you know, it kind of struck me after the first couple of times when I realized that a number of the youths that uh, we interviewed blamed themselves for being homeless, for drinking too much or uh, drumming too much or, uh, or not listening to their parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think that comes with, it's an incomplete reality, uh -huh. right? I think it, it, for all of us, as we grow up, we realize what our mistakes were. And so many of the youth were realizing the mistakes that they made. I, one that we just most recently interviewed, um, she had said that people were trying to tell her what to do, but she just was too strong-headed to listen. But the other side of it is just as many youths, if you really dug a little bit deeper, you learn that their family was just rift with all sorts of other problems, domestic violence, their parents were using drugs or abusing alcohol, or um, they were being physically or sexually abused themselves. And so it's, it's a very complicated matter. It's not just blaming them. And, but but uh, similar to any young person, we often blame ourselves for our problems. Right. And that's, that's quite correct. And as you say, uh, there were many complicated problems going on with many youths that uh, uh, we had talked to. And, you know, and another thing that, I mean, you know, there's a number of agencies in town that... Uh, that provide services to homeless youth, but the the problem is, is that um, Main Street doesn't help. I mean, you know, like, you know, uh, we actually went. You and I actually went to a tunnel one time, mm -hmm. right, where we witnessed where the tunnel had been washed out because the youth had been staying there. That that their uh, all mm -hmm. their belongings and such were uh, washed up, didn't we? Yes. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was it was a very hot day. I remember that. It was over 100 degrees, and one of the youths was taking us down to show where his, um, where the tunnel was, where they were staying, and it was just filled with water, and because of the heat of the day and how quickly water evaporates, um, it was his... Uh, his uh, assessment that probably what had happened just happened within a matter of of minutes, you know, or, or to an hour or so from, you know, within a very short period of time from mm -hmm. when we were there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, 
uh, running into one youth. Um, yes, I remember r running into, uh, it was a couple youths that told me that uh, they had stashed their belongings in a certain place mm -hmm. and that the police had pepper sprayed all their belongings so they couldn't use it again. I mean, that is such a tragic uh, situation to be occurring because what they lose, not only do they lose uh, uh, medications, IDs, uh, photos, and, and maybe all their connections to, uh, uh, to, to their families and, and people that they know and stuff. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that really struck me that the police would do something of that sort. You would think that they would be more understanding of uh, youths that uh, don't have, are not able to avail themselves of, of what other youths have that are housed and have active parents. Well, I think there's a very common misunderstanding that um, most of the folks that are homeless are doing it by choice. And, um, you know, I mean, just look at the whole political climate right now about entitlements and things like that. And, and you know, for I think both of our experience has been as almost without exception, there may have been one or two people that, that indicated that you know, that, that it was a conscious choice that they were making, but by and large, all of them were very hopeful to be able to get into a program mm -hmm. or into an apartment um, and to, to be in a place um, where they were warm and where they could clean themselves. You know, the most, the most stunning thing to me over and over again was just everyone saying how di the, one of their biggest chores every day next to just finding something to eat was just how to maintain hygiene like even though um they were living on the streets the the dignity of being clean was uh a, a very important thing and and i know it's important for me to be clean every day and and just for these young adults to really want to have that part of of their dignity intact right every day right mm -hmm. i remember in one particular incident, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a youth that we uh, did an interview with a group of youths in a tunnel. And he said something about uh, jumping in some swimming pool or something of that yeah. sort. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I lived in um, a co-housing community for, for several years with my son. And I remember a, a certain degree of outrage by the community because there was it's because there was a person found in the pool mm -hmm. and you know the uh, the assumption was you know the person was either under the influence of something or or you know a, a little bit off or a little bit crazy and they were messing up our space yeah. and and i remember having you know admittedly some of those sorts of feelings like feeling violated mm -hmm. but but then at the same time getting to know now the people that uh, that are actually looking for those opportunities. It's not like they are um, looking to party. You know, they were, they're looking for a place to be clean. Right. And, and, and they're doing the best that they can with what they have. And, and there are different organizations in town that will allow them to go in like once a week to clean and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And if, if you're a lady and, you know, it's, sometimes it's very important to... Once a week is not enough, you right. know. You, right, you, right. I can, that sort of I can thing. understand so, that. Yeah. So. There's, a, there's, a, there's a part to that component you just mentioned, uh, because I remember uh, being told that um, that original tunnel that we went into where we um, uh, sh shot an interview, the fact is, uh, if you want to, you can go to FigueroaFoundation.com and see uh, Homeless Youth Project Tunnel Youth, I believe it's, I, I, we named it. Mm -hmm. And you can see what we're talking about. Uh, there was these five youth, well, four or five, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. There was four of them. Four, four, four or five youths uh, living in the tunnel under the cities where we walk. It's a very powerful video. I, you, you placed um, the, still, the still images that we took um, along with, I think it was, you had like a dialogue or some statistics mm -hmm. that you yep, were given. Correct. And I think even some music too. It was a very, very moving video that I really recommend that people see. And um, 
And then I think what I'll also mention is I have a website where I've, I've kept a running log of all the photos that people Correct. can go and see too. And at some point I can you know, give that address if, if you'd like, so. Okay, sure. Yeah. Why don't you give them that address? That okay, so um, my website is called essencephotography.com and essence is spelt with five letters. E as in elegant, S as in smell, E as in elegant, N as in natural, S as in smell. So essencephotography.com. And then if you go to the community events gallery, and then you scroll down because I have many, many different albums in there. But if you scroll um, uh, through the gallery, you'll see one that's entitled, I believe it's simply entitled Homeless Youth Project um, or Homeless Youth. And it, um, there is a running album of images that we have taken during our many shoots. And, and as we interview folks, I continue to um, add to that album. Good. Looks like we have a call. Yes, we do. Oh, welcome to the home. Uh Homeless Youth Project. Uh, yes, I just have a quick question for you. I was wondering, what do you think is the leading cause for homeless youth? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, we, we might get two opinions here. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, I believe, personally, myself, I believe having come in contact with many uh, homeless youth, of which Kathleen came in contact with the same ones, um, I believe that the fault lies in the adult. I, I firmly believe that it's a hundred percent. It's for, it's because of an adult. Okay. Parents, you mean parents, you know, I mean not caring for their kids and just tossing them out. Well, right. I mean, you know, we've heard we had kids uh, talk about or youth rather uh, talking about. You know, they didn't. Um, they drank too much or they drugged too much or they didn't listen. That's why uh, they're homeless. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, to me, that's 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 an adult issue. That's a parent's yeah. issue. That's the that's the you know uh, the uh, like you know the the breakup of the family. You know, which today you know, I mean, two parents usually have to work, or most you know uh, families or one you know family you know one parent family. You know, I mean, that because right. of the breakdown of the family from society, I believe, don't you think? Yes, without a, without a doubt, that's part and parcel to the whole picture, I think. What do you, what do you think, Kathleen? I, I, I think that that's true. And, and then also what I said before is many of the youth, once we dug a little bit deeper, um, there was always family issues going on, something, yeah. something to the effect of domestic violence yeah. or um, uh, between the parents um, and, or substance abuse by the parents. Yeah. Were the parents physically or sexually abusing them? There, there uh -huh. were other reasons that stemmed from from that, or um, you know, parents that are so caught up in their own dynamics and their own drama, or yeah. um, that. Too fast pace of the world today. Pardon me. The, the world is too fast paced. You know, right. Where you, where you know people don't sit down at the table anymore and have a dinner. I'm 62, so. You know, I grew up, you know, when we sat all down and had dinner together, you know. I think a lot of problems in society today is caused from the breakup of the family, you know what I mean? Not only homelessness, I think a lot of crime, gangs is one thing where, you know, youths turn to gangs to be their family since they don't have a family, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And we have to, we have to, we have to understand though that a healthy family can be a very broad, fa you know, there's many different definitions of healthy family, right? So it, it can be just a single parent household. It, it's, it's a matter of the quality yeah. of, of love and attention yeah. and, and presence that we have with our kids. Yeah. And, um, uh, uh, the, a lot of the young folks that we have met don't have that. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, I, I've mentioned this in other interviews, one of the, when we were in the tunnel with this one group of people, uh, there, I think there was four youth there, and they were all kind of very different, and they presented themselves very differently. And if you actually look at the photos, you can see the qualities in the uh -huh. different, in the different youth. And one fellow was really out there, and, and I suspect that he was probably under the influence of something. And the rest, I don't think they were. Mm -hmm. But uh, the young lady, we, we had asked some question about what would you want the public to know? 
And I forgot who said it, but it was a response that has stuck with me. And this interview was maybe close to two years ago. Right. Um, Actually, it was two responses. Okay. Well, two, well, the, from two different people. Okay. Right. The response that I heard that I that really stuck with me is, "Don't judge me by who I hang around, Correct. because we we kind of help each other out because we have nobody else." Yes. So I if can it, that. and and it was interesting that person wasn't sliding or wasn't. Uh, talking, you know, cutting down that person who was really uh, talking like way out in the stratosphere yeah. during the interview. Um, right. But it was like respectfully saying, hey, I want you to take me at my own merit. Yeah. And e even though this dude here is acting a little off, mm -hmm. I, I have kind of a, a sense of obligation to help him. Yeah, and, and, they don't and, want to be all brutal. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a really, it was right. a... Because there's all different circumstances, like you say, and all different, you know, you know, reasons and everything that's right that, you know, uh, could cause that. But right. I, you know, I, I've always said it, and I, and, I, and I still believe it, you know, I mean, I raised two children myself. My daughter's 28, my son is 26. I mm -hmm. spent all my time with my kids, and uh, my wife recently passed away six years ago. Uh, and, uh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's still pretty tough, but the Lord's helping me through. But uh, I think, you know, I really, you know, think breakdown of family and, 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 and the breakdown of religion, no matter what you believe, what kind of religion, you know, I mean, uh, I think that's got a lot to do with a lot of problems in society today. And I appreciate talking to you. I'll watch you again, and I'll check out your uh, website. And... Uh, Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you very okay, much. Good night. Good night. Good night. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think one thing uh, the people need to know that, okay, we, we mentioned about these four youths being in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that many youths will band together in ad hoc families, so to say, in order to, uh, for protection and also to help, the, help, uh, uh, help them survive. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And and I'm actually one one other thing that I was um, surprised about is resourceful. Like like right now, if if I suddenly became homeless, I I wouldn't know a whole lot what to do. I mean, I've learned a few things now being involved in this project with you, but um, the there is a resourcefulness in these young adults about um, they know where to, to get certain things. They know who's trustworthy. There are certain people and organizations that will actually go out um, because uh, out onto the street knowing where the youth um, uh, will reside or hang out. And, and I think Ron and I right now, we have a certain sense of obligation to respect their privacy, knowing you know, where they are and things like that to help um, fulfill them being safe out in the community. But, but we have folks that help bring just things like toiletries out and change of clothes or just, you know, some snack foods. Um, and a lot of these youth know where they can go on a Sunday to, to go get a free hot meal and a, and a free shower. And, and there's, there, there are resources out there. Um, uh, I just recently got uh, a phone message from one of the youth that we contacted. We haven't even touched on the fact of, of youth that are not only homeless but have an alternative lifestyle, which even is more complicated. Um, and she very excitedly told me that she just recently got an apartment and she would like me to come and photograph her and her dog, which I thought was just very sweet that, that she felt the connection and she felt safe enough to call me. So I'm, I'm definitely going to follow through on that and, and, and photograph her with her dog so she can, you know, post it and share it with her friends and things like that. So. Yeah, um, Kathleen just mentioned about uh, homeless youth with alternative lifestyles. And, uh, you know, there are many LGBTQ homeless youth out there on the streets. And quite possibly, they have it harder, much harder than in certain ways than uh, regular kids that are out there homeless uh, because of their uh, gender preferences. But... You know, we 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 touched on uh, the uh, 
we talked about the youth in the in the tunnel. And what I was going to say uh, before our telephone call was that um, they had gotten kicked out of the tunnels, and several of the youths told me that what had happened was that the police came and kicked them out. And then uh, what occurred was that the tunnels being as they are, uh, being somewhat, the access to the tunnels uh, being somewhat below a ground level, above the ground level was, was these manufactured homes looking over the tunnels, and someone there reported the use. And as I mentioned before about uh, the uh, police not helping situations by uh, pepper spraying homeless youth's um, belongings or even uh, f flushing their belongings out uh, by using the fire department's hoses, they, the public don't help, okay? Because uh, the, the, the homeless youth that we have come in contact with are demeaned by the public. And I believe why that occurs is because uh, the mainstream media has never really portrayed homelessness as it is. Okay, they never, every time you see, um, well, almost every, most every time, every time you see a homeless person in the media, they're uh, getting arrested or maybe they fell off a train or, or they're looking very disheveled, mm -hmm. okay, or they're drunk or, or something of that sort, and you never, hardly ever see homeless uh, people that are, or, or youth that are trying to reemerge back into the mainstream, and they're well-dressed, articulate, uh, and uh, striving to uh, uh, go back to the mainstream life. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, it's a hard road for them. Um, and you're right, the images that we that the media portrays regularly uh, doesn't help that. It actually comp you know, compounds the problem. And, and I think what we're attempting to do with our project is to show the humanity of the youth and, and to um, illustrate how difficult their challenges are. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to say again that uh, we have Kathleen Dreyer here, a uh, volunteer photographer for the uh, Carlos D. Figueroa Foundation, and uh, she and I have uh, shot video and photos, she, she being a photographer, uh, of many homeless youth together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And also, uh, there is a call-in component at, at the bottom of your screen. You'll see the telephone number, uh, that, uh, or two numbers, that uh, you can access our show and you can ask questions. Um, at will. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, I, it, you know, sometimes I, I just really don't understand uh, why the media portrays homelessness as, you know, the media themselves, they have such a powerful influence on, uh, on the masses, okay? And um, I tend to think, it's a personal opinion now, uh, that the media has lost their way, uh, that they are not, uh, they have not contributed to the welfare of homelessness hardly at all, uh, because the images that they have portrayed uh, on TV and movies and such of that sort. Um, but we are, as Kathleen has just mentioned, we are through our videos, and our photos, are are trying to create and advocacy to help um, educate uh, the man and woman in the street about the reality of those conditions. And uh, what will occur hopefully uh, pretty soon is that we will uh, be putting together a documentary tentatively named Homeless Youth Project Tucson, Arizona. And uh, this will be made up mm -hmm. of uh, compiled uh, pieces of videos and photos that we have of all the youth uh, that we have shot. Um, but I, I think what I would I would like to add there is if any of you in the listening audience happen to know 
um, a homeless youth or actually run into someone and are brave enough to just approach them and talk to them on the street, um, I'd encourage you, and I, I assume, Ron, you'd, you'd agree with this, to um, encourage them to get in touch with us through this website. Um, we would, we are looking for more and more youth to um, interview and, and to hear their stories. Um, uh, that would be a wonderful thing. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So we, uh, that, that, that's correct. Uh, if you go to our website, which you'll see at the bottom of our screen, um, FigueroaFoundation.com, you'll have, you'll find a con my con my contact information. You can call me on the phone, or you can um, uh, email me. Thank you for watching our show. Thank you very much. And we'll be Take on care. again next month.